Well, TP-Link did something that I think is genius. Holy moly, was it better for me. If you're ready to upgrade your Wi-Fi to the latest, greatest supersonic speeds, we need to talk. TP-Link were kind enough to send me their latest Wi-Fi 6E setup. They're calling it the Deco. This is the XE75 Pro, and it comes out on Friday, August 25th. And I got a coupon code for you, so check out the description below. I set this bad boy up. And I've been playing with it in the house. I was currently running an Orbi tri-unit system. So I had two satellites and a main device. It was a Wi-Fi 6 system, paid about 800 or so dollars for it. And I've had it in the house, I don't know, about a year and a half or so. And it's been pretty good, but it hasn't been astounding. And I've been surprised at some of the discrepancies in speed that I've been getting. So I was excited to test this TP-Link system and see is Wi-Fi 6E the savior that I've been looking for? Getting the stuff out of the box was super simple. Setting it up, what you would expect. You're gonna hook up to the device through Wi-Fi. It creates its own Wi-Fi network. I'm giving you some screenshots here of the step-by-step -step process. It found itself pretty easy. I did have to unplug my Comcast router, plug it back in, and then plug in the deco so that they would kind of find themselves. When I did that, everything worked great. It found itself, I created my Wi-Fi, I set it up with the exact same name, the exact same password as my previous system. Because that way, all my devices just magically find it. I don't have to go around the house, resetting every Google Home, every Ring doorbell, camera, and all the other goodies that we've all got in our houses because we've got way too much Wi-Fi going on. When you get to the satellite device, let Uncle Mikey help you out a little bit here. Don't do what I did, okay? Don't go put that satellite where you think it's gonna live, plug it in, and think it's gonna find its main base station because it won't. Then you read the small print in the help files, which I should have read first and I didn't. And it says, when you set it up, make sure the satellite is right next to the main unit. And when it says right next to, it means right next to. Because the second time I tried to set it up, I was maybe five feet away and it still didn't work. And I had to put it right next to it. The other thing that was a little bit tricky on that setup for the satellite, you can see lots of flashing lights, flashing blue, flashing yellow, flashing green. You gotta wait for all those things to happen because it's gonna update its own firmware, it's gonna go through a bunch of stuff. And so I was trying to set it up while it was still doing its thing. When it finally got to the blue flashing light, then it found the main base station and hey presto, everything was fine. It set up perfectly and it worked flawlessly. I then moved it downstairs in the house. So the two satellites that I used to have plus a main base station, I replaced with one main base station and one satellite from the TP-Link Deco system. I live in a pretty spacious home and I was wondering whether it was really gonna work or not, only having the two spreading out across the whole house. Cause like I said, I used to have dead spots, particularly from one end of the house to the other, even though I had a satellite you know, pretty close here. When I went into the bedroom, if I would try and zoom or something like that, I just want some quiet. I'm kind of at the furthest point from the base station and probably a good 20, 25 feet from the closest satellite. I would sometimes struggle to hold the connection and my speed tests would be double digits and I've got a gig coming in. So to get 30 or 40 megabits per second when I'm bringing in a gig was really disappointing. After setting up, we ran some speed tests and I'm gonna show you some numbers here just so you can see. Close to the base station, I have an IT closet at the house, and so with the door closed, I lose about 100 meg per second. It's a solid door, and I guess it does what it does. You may have a different experience, but that's what I have. So I left the door open. I was getting 1.1 gigabits per second, about 10 feet away from the main base station in the home. If I moved into my home studio where we do some of this filming, that's about a 25, 30 foot distance and I have a metal roof on the house, so that does affect things when I'm in the studio. On my old system, I was getting about 130 to 140 megabits per second. With the new Deco system, I was getting about 200 or so. So not a massive improvement. I then went downstairs and I stood right by the base station that I set as the satellite. And I ran a speed test again. On my old network, I'd pull about 100 or so again, maybe about 150. I'm losing a lot of speed through the house. With the new Deco, I was pulling in about 200 or so. So still not a great improvement, maybe 220. So I started to play around and think to myself, okay, I'm missing something here. Something should be better than this. It's a Wi-Fi 6E, maybe I don't have it configured correctly. 
I went back into the settings and I started to look at the advanced settings. Here's a screenshot of that so you can see it. And there's a couple of settings that I thought were particularly interesting. The fast roaming I turned on because I want my devices to be able to split between the satellite and the base station as quickly as possible if they need it. I don't want it to hold its connection to the base station because it's still okay if there's a stronger connection at the satellite. And I have this at, at my co-working spaces as well. We run about nine or 10 different ruckus access points at each one of my co-working locations. And we have this fast switching thing happen. So as you walk through the space, what happens is you handshake with access point number one over here, let's go when it realizes new access point number three is actually closer and stronger. It lets go of this one and it grabs this one. So as you move along, you maintain that strong signal. And that's what you want, especially when you go into a multi-satellite system like this. That was the first change that I made. Then I noticed that the six gigahertz network had an option to not just use that frequency range for the backhaul, but to also use it for the network itself. So let me explain a little bit of uber technical stuff for you here. And I don't like getting super technical. This makes me uncomfortable, but I'm gonna do it. and I'm gonna take the pain for you guys, my awesome viewers who leave me the nicest comments, okay? Seriously, my favorite community is YouTube and I have a couple of social media accounts and things. I don't do a whole lot on them, but I really enjoy reading the comments. I'm still replying to all of them myself. So it really is me. So if you're gonna be mean and ugly, okay, then it's still me replying and reading it. So be nice, cause why not? Dude, my man Philo. This is the best Surface Pro video this far. I agree. Dude, I'm glad you agree. Thanks for watching. It makes me feel awesome when I get good comments like this. The way that Wi-Fi networks have gone, in the good old days, we had 2.4G. That was the original Wi-Fi. Lots of things run around that frequency, even microwaves, cordless telephones. And so you get a lot of noise and interference at the frequency. So then a few years later, we stepped up to five gigahertz or 5G as some people like to call it. Don't confuse it with 5G on the cell phone, it's not the same. But five gigahertz opened up a new frequency band and there was a lot less noise on there. And so for a while it was great. But then more and more devices have used five gigahertz, doesn't travel through walls as well as 2.4. And so there's a few different kind of pros and cons you gotta think about when you're running those frequencies. Now with 6E, we've got a six gigahertz channel. So it's a nice clean channel, not a lot of noise at all. No other devices are really using that frequency to any extent. What happens is manufacturers like my Orbi system, they said, okay, we're gonna make not two bands, 2.4 and five, we're gonna make a tri-band system, but that third band, that's gonna be reserved just for our satellites to connect with our base station. So in other words, if everything communicated on a five gigahertz frequency, your device to the satellite would be communicating at 5G, and then the satellite to the base station is also communicating at 5G. So in theory, if you only have a, a hundred megabits of speed, that's being split because two different things are trying to send you data across the same network. By adding a third band or making it tri-band, the third band is clean and reserved for the backhaul just for sending data between the satellites and the other two networks stay clean. Well, TP-Link did something that I think is genius and it surprised me when I saw it in the settings, but it works really well. What they did is they said, we're gonna give you access to the six gigahertz band if you want and you can try it out and see whether it's any better for you. So I did, and lo and behold, holy moly, was it better for me. I still only got my 1.1 gigahertz when I was about 10 feet away from the main router, but now in my studio, where I was only pulling like 180, 220, you know, in that kind of range, all of a sudden I'm pulling 600 megahertz. No. I'm pulling 600 megabits of speed. Significant improvement, same phone, Pixel Pro 6, Thank you, Mr. Google. And then downstairs, I was pulling about 500. So still over double the speed, same network, same internet connection, same phone. The only thing I changed was I moved from the 5G to the 6G on the back hall being opened up and being allowed to use devices as well. So again, your mileage might vary. I'm not proclaiming to be the world's greatest network tech, although I have been around it for a while. So. Feel free to add some, some color and some useful information in the comments below if you know more than me on this stuff, but I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible for folks listening. I thought it was a great improvement. Other things I like about this system. 
are some of the advanced features. I'm going to show you some more screenshots here. You can add in things like child protection, monitoring, and all the things that have now become standard. I do wish we could get a little bit more of that without having to pay for subscriptions all the time. It's just a personal bugbear of mine. If I subscribe to everything that everybody asks me to subscribe to, I'd literally be working just to pay for all my subscriptions, and I don't want to do that. So I try and be a little bit conservative on those things. But there are some added features. You can create VLANs and, and segregate networks and make them more protected. You can create a guest network. You can create your own passwords. You can use default passwords. It's WPA3 with the 6 gigahertz network. So it's higher encryption and security. And overall, look, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but holy moly, this is an awesome wireless network. Let me wrap it up for you here super quick. If you want awesome Wi-Fi, this is a great setup. Two satellites. It says it covers up to 5,500 square feet. I stretched it a little bit beyond that, and I was getting coverage far greater than that. So even if you've got a big house, you're going to be in good shape using this system. The best part, I paid, as I said, nearly $800 for my Orbi system. This is $399 at launch. And we are filming this in launch week. The video is going to drop a couple of days beforehand. So if you're looking at getting one, it's already a great price. And because the good folks at TP-Link were so kind to send this to us to review, for you, my awesome viewers, they also sent me a coupon code that you can use. I'm not sure how long it's going to last. I'm going to put it in the description below. So use that coupon if you want. Save yourself a little bit of money. I don't get an affiliate link from Amazon or anything like that. So whatever it is, it is. Listen. We tested an Eero system not too long ago that was also Wi-Fi 6E. I was not impressed with that overall. This was a whole lot nicer to set up. It was a whole lot quicker to get running fast. And the speed increases I was able to see were significantly better than we saw. But that video is there if you want to check it out as well. Ask me your questions. Till next time, let's go out there and be amazing. Mr. or Mrs. Bondat. 339, big just like... You know I like my track pads big, just like I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to leave it alone. And then at four, softer on the press. Are we still talking about the laptop here, Uncle Mikey? I do like my keyboards a little softer on the press. Okay, look, I just try and spice it up a little bit to keep these things exciting for y'all. You know, it is what it is. So take it or leave it. Dell XPS 13 from my man Robin Hunter. Great rant. So true, Robin. I'm glad that you agree with me. Make the website easy. I know plenty of people don't. So... I don't know, maybe we needed a simplified version and a techie version and keep both of us happy. I don't know. Jamie Robertson, another great review. Thanks for the love, dude. That was my new Samsung Galaxy book that we dropped here just a few days. Listen, keep those comments coming. I enjoy reading them. It does bring me a lot of, a lot of happiness, especially when they're nice. And I'm glad that the channel's helpful to you folks that are watching and giving you time to hang out with me, Uncle Mikey. Don't forget, check out the new shop shop.mikethacker.com links are in the description as well you can get this awesome set of prints if you want you can also get some fine art signed mega fancy ones and we've got more gear coming so depending on when you're watching this i mean i have all kinds of swag that you can spend your money on so till next time dude you're amazing